Good day. This is a sermon for the fifth and final Sunday after Easter, also known as Rogation Sunday, in the year of our Lord 2020. My name is Ross Head, and I'm the Anglican priest and rector of St. Peter's Church in Fredericton, New Brunswick. I take for my text today for a sermon uh, a portion of today's Gospel from John's Gospel, chapter 16, commencing to read at verse 23. Jesus said unto his disciples, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall have, that your joy may be full. And then a little bit lower, he says, uh, At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world, and go to the Father. Rogation Sunday is about prayer. That is to say, it comes from the Latin words rogo rogare, meaning to ask. And asking is one of the things, one of the many things, that we do in prayer. Now, in essence, prayer is a very simple and straightforward thing. That is to say, it's communication with our God. But having said that, we need to pause and think for a moment. God is spirit, and he who believes in God believes in the Son and the Father, as well as the Holy Spirit. But God being spirit means that when we hear or pray to God, we don't necessarily need to use spoken words, and God certainly doesn't speak to us back in spoken words in the sense of us hearing voices. No, no. That is to say, uh, prayer is a communication from mind to mind. That is, our human minds directing ourselves towards God. And God, of course, is much greater than we. And God's mind is much superior to ours, to say the least. Our minds have a great difficulty staying focused on one thing for any part of time. And also our minds are so very easily distracted. And so in prayer we need to intentionally, purposefully, focus upon our God and direct our thoughts towards Him and with a realization as to who it is we're dealing with. Uh, we are in time, God is in eternity. We are finite, God is infinite. Uh, our minds are easily distracted, God is pure focus. Those are just some of the differences between us and the one that we pray to. Now also, when it comes to prayer, one has to be very careful uh, with texts like today. Whatsoever things ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. At one level, it would appear that if we simply end our request to God with, in Jesus' name, then the Father has to give us whatever it is we ask for. Uh, such, of course, is ridiculous. And it's particularly ridiculous uh, because it takes one portion of Scripture and ignores all the rest. And it also has the difficulty of thinking that God exists for our benefit. That is to say, as Bob Dylan says in one of his songs years ago, Bob is just, uh, God is just a sort of a pizza delivery man. We put in our requests and he has to deliver. Uh, such is not the reality. Which gets me to the more complicated aspects of prayer. That is to say, uh, in a short sermon, I can't cover all the aspects of prayer at all, because prayer is, in many levels, a very complex subject. It involves uh, an understanding of God and of humanity. It understands of a relationship between time and eternity, the relationship between providence and God's overriding will, and our human and finite uh, wills. Uh, it uh, <coughs> involves all sorts of complexities of that sort. Uh, complexities of time, which we are stuck in, past, present, and future, and the eternity of God, God who is outside of time altogether. And so prayer is not simply a matter of us making requests to God that he has to indeed answer. Uh, and that's, of course, a very interesting concept too, isn't it? Uh, we tend to think as human beings, and people may actually say, well, did God answer your prayer? And the idea being that only if you got exactly what you were requesting did God hear and answer, which is an exceedingly silly notion. 
That is to say, surely to goodness, God has to have as many options in answering our prayers as we have in answering our children. A variety of answers are always possible. If we have a young child, four or five years of age, and comes to us as a parent and asks for something, we can say, yes, Johnny, or no, Jane, or we can say, let's wait and see, or we can say, maybe. There are all sorts of possible answers that we as a human parent have as an options to give to our children. Imagine how many options God has in relationship with us as finite beings as part of his creation. It has to be at least that many options. And also, uh, the idea that a very clear no isn't an answer is, of course, silly. No is very much a clear answer. Now, but we may say, well, what I requested is perfectly reasonable and good. Well, that brings us to another thing, too. In order to pray, we need to have some sort of sense that the one we pray to is trustworthy, true, and above all, someone who loves us. That is the basis upon which Johnny or Jane coming to us and making a request is based. The child knows that the parent loves them. So too, in our prayers, it presupposes that we love the one we're praying to. Otherwise, why would we bother? Uh, and so, in loving the one we pray to, that involves trust, or some might say the faith, that God knows what's best for us. There are times in life when what we ask for wouldn't indeed actually, in retrospect, be the sorts of things that is best for us to receive. So we have to keep that in mind in prayer as well. Now, as I've said before, must be reiterated again, the prayer of asking for is only one type of Christian prayer, and not necessarily the most important type at all. There are other forms of prayer, and other forms of prayer that we should practice and intentionally pursue in order to broaden, deepen, and improve our spiritual lives. Two other kinds particularly come to mind. One is prayer of thanksgiving. That is to say, we should always in our prayers pray and thank God for something. If we can't find anything in our day, or in our week, or in our lives to be thankful for, then we have a problem. We have a problem with our understanding of who we are and what we're about as Christians. There is always something that we can find, and it's a good exercise to force ourselves to find it, uh, to be thankful for, and so to thank God in prayer. This is why in morning prayer service, for instance, there's a prayer of general thanksgiving in the bottom of page 14. This is also why the word Eucharist comes from the Greek meaning thanksgiving, because in the Eucharist we give thanks to the Father for the gift of the Son in the power of the Spirit, and we return God's love to him through the Eucharistic worship. And so, prayers of thanksgiving. And just, just to hit a few things that we might be thankful for, our very own existence, for instance, our consciousness of ourselves, I think, therefore I am, I am a Christian, and I give thanks to our, my God for that, and the continuing, uh, our continuing existence, that uh, is the maintenance both of ourselves, our sustenance, our sustaining ourselves, and also, of course, the, the continuation of creation itself. That is, not only do we believe God is creator, but he is the force that sustains the universe, keeps the atoms and the protons, the electrons, keeps her all together. And so those are just some of the things that we may be thankful for. And then, of course, finally, there's the prayer, uh, the notion of uh, praise or adoration in our prayers. And this is, of course, where hymn singing comes in most explicitly within church services. But we don't have to be at church to sing hymns of praise to God. That is the idea that we as his creatures, we as those who are loved by the Almighty, are ones that could adore, worship, and praise our God simply for his goodness and love. And so those are at least three types of prayer. Prayer of asking or intercession, prayer of thanksgiving, and prayer of praise and adoration. Three types, just off the top of my head, of prayer that we should be, indeed must be, involved with as followers of Jesus Christ. 
So on this Rogation Sunday, this Sunday in which traditionally we think about prayer, and traditionally it was a time to think about prayer for planting and the preparing of the gardens and the planting of the seed, looking forward to the harvest in the fall of the year, praying God's bounty for good weather and hopefully warmer weather, and also for the rains in their season and for the sunshine and the heat of summer. And the midst of that concern, this fifth and final Sunday after Easter, we pray for this time, of course, we pray not just for the crops and for the gardening, but we pray for our country, we pray for our world in the midst of this pandemic. We pray upon God's grace upon us, his mercy upon us, granting us patience, granting us comfort, granting us continual assurance of his love. Let those be some of the things both for ourselves, for our loved ones, for our country, for our community, and yes, indeed, for the world that our Father created. Let those be some of the subjects of our prayers on this Rogation Sunday and throughout this coming week. Thanks be to God. Amen.